Hey, it's uh, Benjamin Douglas Ray here with Sustainable Cannabis TV. I've got Preston Weeks here for the new year, the first live person of the year. How are you doing? Fantastic, Benjamin. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's great to get the year going and to be on a live event, to be out helping people. Oh, that's great. Well, thanks for your time. And you're in uh, Scottsdale. Is that where you are now? Yeah, Scottsdale, Arizona. So nice, warm weather here. We, we don't have much of a winter. I just got back from a ski trip, uh, which was a lot of fun. We went up to Utah and got some snow. So I think you're in Colorado, right? Yeah, Colorado. Yeah, I mean, it's bright and beautiful. It's still cold here, but I'm yeah. looking forward. I'm coming down there in March, so I'm looking forward to that warm weather. Nice. Awesome. Well, uh, Preston, so he is a CEO of Operation X, and uh, he's written a book, How to Be Up in Down Times. And I think that's really applicable, really, to what we're going through here in the new year. And we're going to address some some uh, issues in the new year. Primarily, you know, how do you prepare for 2021? You know, how do you prepare for that? And, you know, I know uh, personally that I have big targets that start out at the end of the year. And like most people, um, you know, they only go for a while. So you have to sustain that that juice, you know, that electricity to go out throughout the year. So we are going to talk about that. And I know from starting numerous companies that I kind of wanted to do things on my own. And that's going to be a big part of, of this, what we're talking about here. And Preston, one of, one of his um, uh, initiatives really, or what he focuses on is kind of outsourcing services. Is that right? So that I yeah. don't have to do it all myself internally. Exactly. And, and I've, I've done that before. I've been like the lone wolf and I've thought I've got to do it all or I'm the boss or, you know, it's up to me, the responsibility. But we all know that 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 rarely works. And I know from starting a cannabis MIP that, you know, a lot of people like I did held it really close to the vest. You don't want to talk about it a lot. So you do take on a lot of responsibility. But we know that in some ways that could be a disaster you know, recipe if you don't have a good team behind you or if you don't work with others who have been there or you don't have strategy on the outside. So tell us a little bit about how you got to be where you are and yeah. a bit about kind of what you're up to now with Operation X and, and your strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, a little bit about myself. Well, I am a card nut. So back in the day, uh, I was trying to figure out how to go through college and pave my way through school. And so I started buying and selling cars. I bought and sold cars ever since I could drive just to get a cooler car. And so I started to do it and, and paid my way through school and then graduated and I couldn't get a job that paid me more. So I just started selling cars and became a car dealer. And so, you know, I had this scrappy startup. So I started the, with one $1,600 car and I reinvested in myself and, you know, basically had to learn every single step you know, of that company, I grew that into, I owned, uh, or co 15 different car dealerships wow. and had a bunch of different supporting companies that, you know, like a mechanic shops and paint shops, and finance company, all the different things that were all auxiliaries that helped support that business. And so I, I had to figure it all out. I had to dive in there and I had to figure it all out. And one of the biggest things, one of the biggest challenges with starting a business or being a business owner's risk and cost. And so I had to go through all these different, you know, hurdles and loops and things because I was dumb enough and stubborn enough to fight through it and do it myself, which I wouldn't recommend. That's why, you know, go get people that have fought through it and save yourself 20 years. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that, so that's, you know, my advice is to go, go cut the uh, timeline. But, you know, I fought through it and did it. So now what I love to do is help people. So I take the solutions that I've built in my companies in the past and I've been in a number of other different companies. I, I mean, you talk about sustainable cannabis. So I ran a renewable energy company. So I got pulled out of the automotive sector. I ran a renewable energy company for a few years, built that up, and then uh, we ended up selling it. But, uh, you know, so I I love strategy and diving in and figuring things out. But, you know, figuring out how to, how to do these companies and not do it at a huge risk because I've taken risk. I've had big ups and big downs. And so I've you know, change the way I do things. So I try to de-risk my life as much as possible in all the business ventures I do. And so you look at that and you cut into, you know, operating costs or different strategies. So one of the new things that's happened, everyone's adopted remote life, right? Mm -hmm. So 
been in isolation, depends on where you're at and how strict that's been. But you know, everyone's experienced it across the entire world. And so in the first part of 2020, we were forced to advance about 10 years in like three months. You know, so it, we, we were really, you know, the world was kind of pushed through this refiner to go, okay, you know, we've got to become, you know, this network community. We've got to be, you know, change our access points and change how we connect and change how business works and distribution works and all these different things. And so, you know, how do you deal with that? How do you adapt to that? And so, but what it's done is it's opened up the ability for people to go out and connect. And now they have all these resources. So now we're here talking today and you know, we probably, this it wasn't a popular thing a year ago. You know, right. so, you know, there's all these different channels. So I can actually go and meet with people across the entire world and I don't have to fly there anymore. And I don't have to have all these expensive costs and things because a Zoom meeting is accepted now, even though you know, they're sometimes impersonal or annoying, but they're actually really great too. So we have all these advantages of things, but what that's done is set up something I've been doing since 2010 is you know, using global teams like remote teams and uh, virtual assistants and virtual work teams. Uh, I've mostly done my work in the Philippines and use uh, those people to accomplish tasks that don't need to be done on site. And so now, you know, with the adoption of, and the acceptance of how business works today, the next step naturally is, you know, to expand your workforce beyond your borders, which is already happening. You know, people are moving from high cost areas to low cost areas mm -hmm. remotely. You know, they're doing all these things. Well, the evolution of that is a global workforce. You know, the next step, why not, you know, the only, the only disconnect is language or, you know, social dynamics, but there's amazing people all around the world. And so, you know, how do you use that in your company or how do you use that as your, you know, strategy? So, you know, I think, I, I think that's a thing that's definitely adopted and that's where the future of workforce is going. Uh, and then, you know, you look at all the benefits and different things like that, and the challenges that come from it, you, it actually gives a lot of opportunity for growth, local growth. And because it supports business, like I, I look at it. So some people think outsourced work might be, might be a job deterrent, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't maybe necessarily be able to do certain things in your company if the cost is so high, right? So if you're doing a startup or you're doing you know, a new business and the cost is too high, and you know, I can't hire someone for eighty thousand dollars a year, uh, what, you know, in a startup or whatever, because we're running a tight budget mm -hmm. and things, you know, on the line. And so, if I can get someone for a thousand dollars a month that has the same skill set, that enables our our main company to move forward, and right. it creates more jobs locally, and it creates more, you know, things. So, what I did with my car dealerships was I had my main, you know, team that was my sales team that's on the ground, and I had a back end team. And they ran all of our marketing, they ran all of our back end operations so that people could just show up and they could focus on the customers. They could focus on what mattered yep. and connect, you know, with people. And you know, Edward, uh, one thing you said that was interesting before you, you said, you know, I, I don't have to, you know, do something. So I was thinking like when the, the uh, coronavirus hit, it was like, I don't get to go on a trade show. I don't get to go traveling. And now it's kind of like, I don't have to go because it opened up other worlds for doing business that saved tons of time, uh, increased productivity, a lot of innovation because many of us were, you know, forced with our back against the wall to innovate. And like you said, it jumped a lot of things jumped forward 10 years in the world in terms of technology specifically. And what was once kind of like, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if I could, you know, work collaboratively, collaboratively with people around the world. It kind of seems weird. Now it's kind of like, obviously, it's just what we do. And it's something that we want to do because we know it saves costs. And I also like what you just said about it creates more local jobs, because that's a thought is that if you outsource to the Philippines, that you don't have, that it takes away from local jobs. But what you're saying is that because you have the support on the, the areas that, let's say, 
are repetitive or something that someone can do at a lower cost, then you can have your high value workers here focus on the customer to actually grow your company with that back end support. Yeah, exactly. So what I like to so when I go into a company and kind of help to consult or strategize a company, I like to use the Pareto principle, like the 80 20 rule. You know, and you go, okay, you look at the company, you know, really quickly from a duty and workforce perspective and go, okay, you know, there's probably about 80% of the company that's business work, but it doesn't actually make money. Hmm. It doesn't actually bring anything into the bottom line. So it's all this stuff like. So it just has like busy, like admin stuff or. Yeah, like responding to emails, you know, posting for social media, you know, checking things or just doing follow up tasks or you know, these remedial type of things. Yeah. And you can see them in every type of business, but they're, they're a necessity because if you don't do those things, you're not going to do any business, you know, so they have to. And then you have the 20% that actually makes you the money. So it's, you know, let's, let's say, let's just take real estate for, or for example, um, if you have real estate, you know, they do all the marketing, they do all the advertising, people position themselves as a certain type of agent, you know, they build up their own brand. That's the 80% of the work. The 20% of the work is that face to face. I'm with you client. Here's your home. What do you love? Mm -hmm. You know? It, so it's that that actual you know contact point that creates that transaction or whatever. So like it, and so you can look at that in any different type of company. You know, like a, a cannabis company. You know, it's where wherever that you know crossover is. You know, with that you know your special sauce that you provide. You know, whatever that component is in your company that no one else can replicate. That twenty percent that you're making that is your value basically. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean we when we when we set up ours you know we outsource the you know the hr and the admin because we we're focusing on brand and quality yeah. and the relationships mm -hmm. and that stuff and it, and it worked out extremely well as well as when we set the set up the manufacturing you know mm -hmm. i i had consultants help with fire suppression with cameras like you know i wasn't going to do that myself i needed to bring in the experts and it was for a specific amount of time for a specific job mm -hmm. you know with a set fee on it which is was another thing that was important because then i could control my costs all the way through and not mm -hmm. just have um you know hourly workers that you know didn't didn't really have a task to do uh, specifically yeah. so um i wanted to mention to our our viewers here uh, if you want to ask any questions, uh, Preston, happy to answer those, as well as let us know where you're listening from. It's kind of cool to uh, to see where you guys are in the world. So well, what I, I wanted to do is ask you a few questions here about business. And yeah. you're, you're, you, I'd like to, to, you know, have you talk about some strategy in terms of how do you prepare for 2021? Just mm -hmm. how do you do that right now? Because now it's like, let's go. It's 2021. We're past 2020. What do I do to prepare for my business in 2021? Yeah, so I think you know to prepare for your business, I think right now is a time. So everyone's kind of in isolation, right? Everyone's kind of separate. Everyone's doing their thing, but they're kind of trying to adapt in this new world. And I think 2021 is really a year to invest in yourself. You know, I think a lot of people are kind of going, okay, you know, what, what happened before didn't work. This is why. And, you know, I, but it's time to change. It's time to learn. It's time to grow. And, you know, this thing kind of broke that I didn't have control of before. So now I want to take control back into my court and do whatever I can to make my life better, to make my community better, to, you know, to make my product, you know, reach people and do all these things. And so I think, you know, investing in yourself, I think, is a lot is going to be a trend you know it's going to happen this year people you know learning all the new technology all the new skills uh, and then another one too i think that's really important to look at is ai a big trend that's coming up in the future is ai and robotics and i'm also of the, of the mind that i i'm actually pro robotics too because i think robotics cobotics and ai help enable more jobs and i don't think they take away jobs i think you know, if you look at where the manufacturing is being done around the world, it's not being done here. It's being done, you know, where they have 
extremely, uh, you know, predatory labor rates and low, low, low cost. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to combat that, you can't pay people to do that, right? But right. you can pay someone to run a facility of robots, you know, that it, you can, you know, take robots and actually, you know, incorporate uh, machine processes and, you know, take the risk down, take the cost down so that we don't have to outsource things too. So I think that's a, a future trend, but I, w I won't jump into robots too much, but AI is a, AI is here and it's available and it, I mean, things are popping up like crazy, you know, with technologies to automate and basically you can just multiply yourself. Hmm. And so, you know, there's a, a training I'm going to come up with hopefully in a little bit here, <laughs> if I can get around to building it, that is to use AI you know, to help to grow, you know, your reach in, in different places and things like that. And so, and some of that, um, it specifically being LinkedIn too, but there's so many different things. I mean, there's AI for marketing. You know, it, you can find you know, the right audience, the right people, the ones that are going to connect, you know, to you and listen to whatever it is you're trying to do to get it out there. And there's ones that automate some of these back end processes. So like the, 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 killer of outsourced um work is ai you know, kind of, but it also you know helps to enable more business too so it's I, it, it works out in the end but what's going to happen because of all this so there's like i don't know if you've heard moore's law of exponential growth and like computers how they double or so mm -hmm. so you know we've experienced exponential growth in the past and something that's going to change now in the future is we're going to have quantum growth. So th what that basically means is that everything is, you know, kind of moving forward all at the same time. And so, you know, we're going to advance so rapidly over the next 10 years, you know, because of these things like AI and you know, uh, there, there is new technology called GPT-3 that I read about the other day. And it's, it's essentially, you know, some, something that listens to your voice and, and it's AI that can figure almost anything out and then go perform tasks for you. Mm. So it's, there's crazy, crazy, crazy things happening. And so, yeah, I, I won't go too far down that rabbit hole, but that's definitely a trend you know is to look at the ai that's coming out look at the ai that's relevant in your business look at what you can use because it's cheap and it can you know it can add multipliers to whatever you're doing which is just you know phenomenal the um you know it kind of reminds me i a while ago when i saw the first or maybe second austin powers movie dr evil had the mini me and now mm -hmm. he said i need a mini me and so yeah. what you're saying is that that actually will happen in terms of productivity yeah. Right. Yeah. So the uh, we've got a question here from Fernando, who's in Miami now, about automated farming. How how do you see that uh, automation uh, can can help with farming coming up in the next five to ten years? Yeah. Well, you know, so that's it. So I met with um, I I'm, one of my friends is the CFO of the largest cantaloupe grower, you know, in the world. Uh, they're in Arizona, and so you know, I met with him, and I go. It, we were talking and I was like, what's your biggest, you know, point of pain? What's your biggest operating expense? And I won't go into what that is because I kind of told who they are, but, uh, <laughs> you know, he goes, yeah, if we could solve that, you know, with, with, a, you know, like a drone or something, you know, that would kind of accomplish that task, you know, that would, uh, you know, I was like, put a number on it, you know, give me a number. Like, what's that worth every year? Hmm. You know, because, there's these solutions. So if they have, you know, a million dollars a year in labor or whatever, and, and they can invest $5 million in these technologies, you know, and run them for a long time, then, you know, it's, they can actually flatline the, their operating costs because labor costs change and have a more predictive you know, business model. But, you know, with automated farming, you have all these systems, I mean, they'll water your, they'll, you know, check your lights, they'll check your water, they'll, you know, control your nutrients, they'll do all these cool things. And so, you know, it takes a lot of the, uh, you know, part 
uh, done. One, one thing that I really like is, you know, the renewable side of things. So if you look at last year, you know, I think renewables are huge, especially in cannabis, you know, you know growing water, lights, uh, all those things, consumption costs. Um, and I looked when I was at, in my energy company, I looked at a couple different projects and, um, you know, a lot of growers or different things like that are huge energy consumers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, transitioning to LED lights, using solar, using backup battery, um, you, know, you can do all these types of things now. And doing that at scale, you know, it even makes more sense. So that, that stuff is, is moving really, really quickly. Um, with, you know, it, it's just, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's it. I, I won't go. I won't go too far down. There. So there, there's a lot of opportunity. I would say not just in service-based businesses, but actual physical businesses where you mm -hmm. can automate and use IA. Um, maybe you know, not just on the software side, but even on the hardware side to reduce costs but increase productivity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you look at like internal, you know, because a lot of it's a constraint of farming or you know, whatever, you know, it's water, one of the biggest problems, water and, and land, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you put it and then, and then distribution, where's your supply chain? So you go, okay, you know, people are now looking at growing in facilities and, you know, doing all these different types of structures and different things. And what's neat about those is a lot of, a lot of those ideas have the automation in it. You know, they have the automation incorporated in it. And, it, and that's going to keep popping up more and more and more because that's getting really aggressive. Well, thanks. Well, uh, the um, second question here is, you know, you and I have talked a lot about sustainability in businesses and, you know, whether that's a business goal or a personal goal, why do 92 percent of, of people or business goals fail within the first year after the New Year's? What, what's up with that? Yeah, well, yeah, we all have. Our New Year's resolutions. I was actually talking to my wife this morning, and she was saying, "What's interesting is uh, supposedly this is a, a year where there's re less resolutions than ever before. People are kind of giving up on their resolutions, which is not what we need to do. We need we need to resolve things. Uh, so, but yeah, people fail, and so you know it's it's really common that people fail. And so I love you know I I did an event. A little bit ago with a buddy and we were going through some training and coaching on that and you know so right now what i'd like to ask people you know the most important thing is you know, what, what are your new new year's goals or your resolutions but um why yeah you know, why did you create them what what why did you create your goals you know what's the purpose behind it because i like to be really intentionable or intentionable Ugh. intentional Word. <laughs> yeah, I'll make up new words. Intentional about everything that I do. And so, you know, sometimes we create, you know, like, oh, your wife's, you know, giving you a hard time. You got to lose some weight or something. Or, you know, everyone goes, oh, yeah, let's get in shape. We just ate a ton. Or, you know, why are you making these goals? And, you know, what's really important, I think, is looking at, you know, what you want to accomplish and making goals that are worth accomplishing. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so what are your goals? You know, and you know, what, what do you actually want to accomplish and, you know, put some value on that. What's that, what's that worth to you? If you accomplish that, you know, cause goals, people make goals and they're, they're not tangible. So one of the problems, one of the big problems is you're not actually having a clear goal. So say if I have a new year's goal, I want to make more money. Well, that's great you know but it doesn't mean anything yeah you because know, what's more money you know mm -hmm. it, but if i want to uh clear you know five million dollars in sales in by the end of q1 uh, you know in 2021 like that's a goal yeah you know, that's a benchmark and i know when i hit that date if i've achieved it or not mm -hmm. you know so one, one way I, you know i'm I, how i'm interpreting what you're saying is Instead of just saying something like, you know, I want to, you know, be able to lift X amount of weights. Let's say we're talking about fitness. Instead, my goal might be I want to get stronger. 
And then I say, how am I going to do that? I'm going to do 30 push-ups every day for 90 days. And mm -hmm. that way there's a metric behind it. And I will get stronger, but getting stronger, now I know how I'm going to achieve it. Right. Yep. So, yeah. So, you know, why are you making goals? You know, make, make goals that matter to you. Make goals that are important to you that you'll actually do and use, you know, don't make goals for other people. Don't make goals because it's popular. Don't make goals because it's trendy. Don't make goals because you're just trying to make goals because it's new year's <laughs> and be intentional. You know, what do you actually want? And then I, I even like to put a value on it. You know, if I, if I lost, you know, whatever, if I got into this shape, you know, what does that do for me in my life? What does that give me? What do I get out of it? If I, you know, reach these, amount of sales in my company, what does that, you know, do for me? And then, you know, make sure your goals are really clear. Uh, Cause you know, those are some of the two of the big hurdles. And then one of the biggest things that can actually make you achieve your goals. So those are some tips if you want to go pursue your goals yourself. But one of the most important things you can do is create accountability, mm -hmm. accountability in your goals. And there's a couple different ways you can do that by telling someone, by verbalizing it and saying, this is my goal, that just ups your chance of success significantly. You know, by having, you know, someone that you talk to and you say, hey, you're my accountability partner you know, and say, you know, I want you to, you know, I want to, you know, tell you and, you know, you check up with me and ask me again or something if I've ever done this, you know, that, ups your chances of success significantly higher. So, then, so what will what will you commit to um, as public accountability now as you're talking to the world here for what you wanted to do in AI? Uh, well, or well, what, things I things I want to do. Yeah, I, I'm going to build a course for AI training. I'm going to launch right. that. So, uh, and then I'm actually, you know, I'm build. I'm going to build a whole nother course. So I partnered with. Uh, Mark, so a guy named Mark Victor Hansen wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, books, wrote this book, Ask. So I'm building a course this year for him called uh, with the Ask course. I just launched a course called You Have a Book in You hmm. uh, with with him. And so that one, so I wrote the book. Oops, now my book fell. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wrote the book, uh, How to Be Up and Down Times. Yep. The beginning of this year. And really, actually, it started from I, I was on a project with Mark and I was filming the course for uh, You Have a Book in You. And I was so inspired by through building that course that I, I wrote my first book. And so I co-authored this book with uh, Mark and a lady named Mitzi Purdue. Mitzi uh, owns a company called Purdue Farms she, or she's from the family they, and they're like the third largest chicken company in the world uh, so she's pretty pretty amazing and her dad actually started Sheridan hotels hmm. so she's a powerhouse family but uh, re really 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 uh, amazing experience and really great input but you know I just I believe everyone has a story to tell and going tell, tell me about that because I know that you know we've talked about the power of telling stories. And what I've seen is like, as you say, everyone has something unique about them. A lot yeah. of times people say like, well, I don't know what I would talk about or write about, but everyone in this world is unique. Everyone has strengths that are only unique to them. And there is power in that. So if you could tell tell our audience about that, I think that would be valuable today. Yeah, well, you know, like I, I'm really good at some things, but I'm not at others. So I learned to hire, you know, that support around me to fill those gaps and focus on what I like and do and don't do well. And also one thing I've learned is that, you know, everyone's unique perspective is, is special, important and different. And other people connect to that in their own way. So someone might like me and listen to me and they go out, wow, Preston, that guy's really cool. I like him. You know, I really love the, the things that he says. And other people might go, yeah, this guy's total, not not interesting at all. in the blank, right? I hate him, and he's really annoying. I hope I never hear his voice again. And <laughs> but, but other people, you know, they they've got a story to tell, and they might connect to even a similar message differently. So I love 
you know, I really, really think everyone has a special message and a story to tell. And so that's why I, I partnered with the, you know, you have a book in you course. So we built the whole course and then launched this. Actually, it, if you go to www.hansoninstitute.com, you can sign up and, you know, start going in the course, but it teaches basically do, to go from authorship to business because your story is so much more than just you. You can actually, once you write your story down, it not only, it gives you credibility. It states who you are. It shows what you stand for, and and you can use that, you know, to elevate you as a person, to elevate you as a platform, to elevate your company, to show, you know, what all those things, you know, how the, how they all connect, and and basically use it as a tool. So it's not only just a book and a, and a way to provide passive income for yourself, but it's also a way to elevate what you're doing and to get your message out there and. And it just helps the world. It helps. It helps the world. No, I absolutely agree. And I love the name "How to Be Up in Down Times." I mean, it's better than "How to Be Down in Up Times," right? So, yeah, right. I, I, I love the I love the name of that of that. There's a a, a comment here uh, from Matt. Let's see if we can show this uh, all on here. Uh, yeah. So uh, people like to set grander goals that sound really awesome at the time, but then most people stop there. They neglect the next step, which is outlining the steps. They have to take to get there and then uh, they'll know what they're going to be accountable to. And you and I were talking about this exactly in terms of action. Address yeah. that a little bit. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, taking those steps and trying to, if that's why I like to say, what are your goals worth? You know, if you're not making goals that are worthy, then you, you probably need to step it up. And if, if you have grand goals, that are worth something, then get help to achieve them because you know people do need an outline people do need help kind of like we talked about at the beginning of the show you know you surround yourself one thing i've learned in life I, i'm pretty smart guy i figure out a lot of things and i was stubborn and i thought that i wasn't a product of who i surround myself with and i learned a point in my life actually by trying it and going okay i'm gonna step out of my friend group i'm gonna surround myself by people i want to be like people i want to live like and I did that and, you know, it totally, totally changed my life and it, it just, whoosh, you know, took off. And so we are, we definitely are a product of who we surround ourselves with. So if you have ambitious goals, if you have big goals that are worth achieving, then, you know, get help, get someone to help. You. And, and people are willing to help. You know, I find that's a lot yeah. of people are like, they wouldn't want to help me, but people want to help. And the more that you're experienced in your career, the more you want to help others rise up and get to where you are as well. Yep. Well, I've got a, a comment here. My uh, my first car was a 1968 Triumph GT6, which <laughs> I loved. Very small, loved that car, ran it until it wouldn't go anymore. What was your, what's your favorite car that you worked on from when you talked at the beginning of the show? Oh, ooh, my favorite car. I, I'm a Porsche guy. I, I don't know why, but I've always, ever since I was a little kid, I've loved 911s. And then I actually did a little bit of racing uh, in the PCA, Porsche Club of America and things like that. And so um, I love those, but I, I love a lot of different types of cars. So, <laughs> That's probably a tough question. That's harder than talking about your predictions for IA, right? What's your favorite? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like picking a favorite child. <laughs> yeah, pretty impossible. Yeah. All right, good. Well, thanks for being on the show. Uh, let's say we talk uh, 12 months from now and what will have you have accomplished or what? how do you see the world changed? It's kind of a loaded question, but what are your predictions then for the next year? Yeah, so, well, you know, what I think the predictions for the next year, I think, you know, people, a lot of new startup businesses will, will happen. I think people are going to be finding their personal talents. Like I said, it's a year for, you know, personal kind of learning and personal growth. Mm -hmm. I think people will be finding those personal things and, and really manifesting it. I think with AI and the technologies, um, I think it's hard to even imagine, you know, how fast things are going to keep changing, you know, over the next year, I think, you know, in the United States, uh, I think there'll probably be some handouts on some money that come up and that'll kind of pad a couple of things economically and provide a little bit of, you know, economic runway for people to sell things and, you know, create revenue in their business. Um, 
I think that, you know, and, and AI adoption is, you know, one of the, one of the big ones. And then my personal goals, you know, I, I'm going to launch these courses and, uh, I, I want to write another book. That's, that's my, my goal. Are you saying you want to, or you're going to, I'm going to, I'm Perfect. going to, I'm going to go. All right. <laughs> you got the public accountability. That's awesome. Yeah, public accountability. So you're all my accountability partners. So if that's you right. That's right. You know, it's, it's going to be about, you know, the around my life of action training, but I don't Perfect. know. Yeah. yeah. So how can people get a hold of you best? What's your website, your email? Tell, tell the viewers that. Yeah. So, um, we let's see operationsx.com is my website i put let's see or in the chat i think is that a public chat i would put my uh, a link in there okay that has a bunch of different things um so yeah operationsx.com you can you can pretty much find me there and most of the things i do um but yeah we do marketing videos we do i build courses i do and all these different things. Basically, I just make businesses work and whatever whatever that is, I can build a team to do it. I can create, you know, the product to do it. And I'm a marketing and sales expert. But also, uh, you know, I'm a coach too. So I help CEOs and businesses uh, get their goals and get their success. So, you know, if you have goals that you that are worthwhile for 21 and you need help doing it, I'm happy to help you. And I've got a link in, in uh, the link I shared there it has a ton of links to my book it has links to my website it has links to my linkedin and it has everything you know in there so and and it has a spot too if you wanted to uh, book me for coaching you can do that as well perfect thanks super informative i appreciate your time and uh i'll catch up with you in march when i'm down there in uh, scottsdale yeah absolutely let's do it go catch some food or golf or whatever <laughs> yeah it was find some warm weather that's what i'm looking for Definitely. all right Sounds good. Well, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone.